Hello, hi everyone. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are from, and welcome to the live stream today. Um, we are looking to watch together the bronze medal match currently that is ongoing. Again, from Kevin Corden of Guatemala against Anthony Ginting of Indonesia. So currently, we are at 11.5, going into the interval. And hopefully, you guys can watch along with me and, you know, um, join in on the chat. You know, if you have any comments, questions, let me know. Obviously, I'm wearing one set of headphones, so obviously I can hear what's going on on the match today. Obviously, we I can't show you the actual match, um, as that is against um, IOC um, copyright rules and regulations I'm not a broadcaster so I can't be showing you any of the actual match itself so this is a watch along so we're, so we're currently at the interval so coming back out of the interval Kevin Corden is down 5-11 currently Let me know what you guys think so far of the Olympics on the badminton currently. So we're 12 5. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, you're. No, thank you for your support. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your. Um, Username, it's all question marks, but that's really cool. Thank you for your support. I, I appreciate that. More of them coming on the way. So stay tuned. Thank you for your support. Do you think Kevin Corden has any chance against Anthony Ginting today? So currently there's a huge gap. We're looking at 13.5. Oh, service over. 6.13 at the moment. Um, both Jill and Morton are saying really no one likes to play Anthony Ginting because he's really, really fast and has got really good attacking game um, when he keeps it in. Absolutely. But yeah, I think Kevin needs to Try and slow the pace down a little bit, keep the shoulder in, keep himself confident, you know, get his morale up, just keep the shoulder going. First game might be too far away from him already, but play himself into the game, use whatever tactics he's been using really well over the last few rounds. Let's keep moving the shoulder around. Oh, good punch clear. Wow, nice. That's really well worked. That's a good rally. It's good punch cross clear. Any one of you guys watching as well? Currently? So talking about the equipment side of things, so Kevin Corden is playing with the Astrox 99. So that is exactly the same racket as what Kenta Momota is playing with. And I believe he's also using the Aerobite string, as you can see from the red and white strings on his rackets. That is Yonex's Aerobite string. Not too sure about the tension though, but I think Anthony Ginting has his strings really, really tight. So it sounds absolutely amazing coming off that. Ooh, that's on the line.
good pickup. Interception from Kevin Corden. He's playing himself into the game. Um, I think the first end is very clearly quite beyond him now. He's, he's had a few misjudgments on the line calls. Now we're at 8 16. Good stick smash from the round ahead position. Kevin Corden obviously is a left handed player. Flick serve, stick smash down the line. Ooh, Anthony Ginting picked it up as well. Unlucky. Touched it. If you've just joined us, hello, wherever you are from. Drop it down in the chat where you're watching from. Nine sixteen. Oh, wow. Good cross-court smash from Kevin Corden. 10-17. Anthony just thought, oh, I've just played that into him. Keep the shuttle going. Well done. 18-10 currently. What do you think are the tactics that should be employed um, when you're playing someone like Anthony Ginting who is really, really fast, um, has a, an amazing variety of shots and in his attacking game? What's the best way to play someone like him? Ooh. So I think the first game is about to come to an end. We are 19-10. I think the Olympics is the only place, uh, the only tournament that once you've got onto the knockout stages and if you lose in the semi-finals, you still have one more match to play, and that is this match, which is the bronze medals match. Good length by Anthony Ginting. 2011. Game points. Ooh, well in. He's left it. Kevin Gordon's a bit frustrated with himself by leaving quite a few shuttles and them all landing in. Sends him the wrong way. There we go. Only one game point needed. And first game completed in easy fashion by Anthony Ginting. 21-11. Change of ends.
So I'm trying to listen into what Anthony Ginting's coach is saying to him. Oh, hi, Joe. And hello, Let's Play Games from the Philippines. Good to see. Um, I can I can understand some bits from what Anthony Ginting's coach is saying to him. I think the first thing he said to him was, look, you're now with the drift, so be careful about your length and, your, you know, off, um, off your shuttles. And I think try and always stay low, stay low, ready to move and guide the shuttles into, well, he said, turn it, turn it and guide the shuttle. I'm assuming guide it into space. Um, so yeah, so guide it into space and open up the court and make sure you're always low, ready to move. That's what I heard. Um, I cannot understand what Kevin's coach is saying to him, unfortunately. So nice of you both to join us. Let's play games. And Joe, how are you enjoying the Olympics so far? What do you think about the badminton that's been played so far? I think after this match, we have the one very last match today. Ginting. Yep. Oh, what? pace of movement onto that round ahead smash one love absolutely incredible from Ginting Joe what's the best way what do you think Kevin can do to change it just to mix it up just to get closer to Ginting obviously I mean yeah when we look at this like this you know Ginting's obviously got this wrapped up um, barring any turn of events what can Kevin do to mix it up a little bit more Ooh, we've just got a round ahead round ahead smash cross court from Kevin and then Ginting's been caught a few times um, by placing very fast shots to um, Kevin's round ahead side of things and sometimes there's not enough length and he doesn't have enough time to recover Ginting's getting more points every time, you know, he, he gets two, two, three points in a row before Kevin gets one. So I guess that's actually okay. <clears throat> I remember watching Kevin Corden. He, he, he must be, you know, like a certain big game player. The last time I remember watching him live in person was at the 2011 World Championships. I think that was in London, Wembley Arena. First round playing, playing against Chen Long, and that was a big upset. Wow, that's an amazing cross court round ahead smash by Ginting. Find some of the Argentinian passion. Uh, he is Guatemalan, <laughs> Joe. So he's from Guatemala. Flag might look quite similar, but I'm quite sure that's a different country. But I like that, you know, that passion, that feistiness and, you know, always talking to himself saying, come on, G himself up, keep going, keep going. Commit a bit more into the net when pushing Ginting into the rear court. Yeah, I think men's singles, a lot of it involves the net, isn't it? So get into the net closer, tighter. He's actually got quite decent deception, uh, but I guess Ginting's playing so fast that he can't, he can't use his, his deception um, more. You know, he's been restricted. Ginting is absolutely incredible to watch live, rapid. You just don't realize how fast he is. He makes all the top players look not very fast. Unfortunately, I've not been able to watch his matches yesterday. Um, so... I didn't know how, you know, how he looked when he played against his opponent in the semi-finals. 
So from what I can read, Chen Long brought his A star game big time. So Seducci, hello, welcome to the stream. What are you watching the match on? Um, yeah, so BBC. I'm struggling with BBC's um, in the UK's uh, coverage, so I paid for Discovery Plus <laughs> um, on top. So it's a subscription service, um, which apparently BBC is taking the the rights from. So obviously, I think Discovery Plus has bought the television rights from the IOC for all the pan-European countries. So BBC is actually buying their rights from Discovery Plus. And so, yeah, I'm subscribed. I'm on a paid subscription to Discovery Plus and they have every single sport, Olympic sport, I think almost on every single channel. So for the badminton, they have it on every single court over the last almost week now for the badminton. So it was actually great. And I can watch on live and on catch up on demand. Um, it is a little price to pay, but... You know, I think we're getting used to wanting to be able to see every single match on whenever we want to, especially live as well, like something like this. Yeah, un unfortunately, money talks, isn't it? Um, I think Discovery play paid, is it paid $1.3 billion, apparently, uh, for the broadcasting rights for this Olympics, as well as perhaps the next one as well. So unfortunately, yeah, BBC's coverage is going to be not as good as previously. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, they can only show two live sports at once. And this includes all sports, all courts. You know, not necessarily courts, but then all cameras. So you, they can only have two. Um, no, no. So, hello, Vu. Um, yes, yeah, so I can't stream the match live because that is a broadcasting right, at which I don't have. Um, so here I'm just going to... Hopefully you guys can watch it on your side of things and then join me along... Um, me trying to talk some sense into this match i guess um so if we're out of sync slightly um i am currently on nine four in the second end um ginting anthony ginting has got game number one kevin corden is trying to play his way into this match um Joe, yeah, who have I got for the Chen Long versus Axelsen match? It's it's really tough. It's really, really tough. So coming into this Olympics, um, you know, Chen Long, I don't think he was a favorite to win. You know, like you always think, oh, yeah, it's where the Tokyo Olympics. Momota you know, is, has been almost unbeatable on many, many occasions. And you always got all those um, favorites, you know. Uh, Antonsen, Axelsen, Ginting, Jonathan Christie, Shi Yu Qi. Chen Long's always there. Yeah, Chen Long's always there, but you wouldn't put him, you know, on the very, very top of the list. But very clearly, he's a he's an Olympic champion. He is the defending champion. He's bringing it. You know, he brought it like his his game. Um, so I watched his match against Li Zijia from Malaysia, who many of us thought had a chance of a medal. Um, I also watched Lee Zijia's game against uh, Brice from France and Zijia was absolutely firing on all cylinders, you know, attacking game was absolutely incredible. Uh, Brice just didn't have any answers to it. And then I watched Zijia play against Chen Long and Chen Long in the first end really struggled, but then he played himself into the match and, you know, was able to dig out, get out of trouble um, and restrict Zija's ability to really put down these big hammer, big power attacks. Um, so it was actually really, really good to watch. Um, unfortunately, I didn't watch his semis match. Um, but I'm really looking forward to watching the final against Victor. I'm a big fan of Victor as well. Really, really big fan of Victor. He has a huge attacking game. I think perhaps the one weakness, very, very slightly, he's a very accomplished player, very slight weakness he's got is... I think he he needs to be mentally perhaps stronger, but it's just maybe it's just him. You know, it's like him playing against himself. I don't think he loses out in terms of skill, physicality, or timing or anything. It's just he needs to believe even more. He's got amazing confidence. He just needs to believe even more. I guess you know when he comes up against players like Antonsen. Uh, what if Anders Antonsen won the semi final? What do you think? <laughs> he didn't, did he? Um, the quarters, that's correct. Um, 
the Olympics is a is a is a weird thing. Um, it's 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 so hard. It's so hard. Um, the Olympics is so hard. Like it's a once in a four year four year event. It's five for the cycle, uh, you know, and everyone wants it. Everyone wants it. No one wants it more than the other person. And it's just being able to play your A game, bring your game onto the court against that particular opponent at that time, isn't it? There's no need, well, there's no point if you're world number one or whatever, and then you can't bring the game that you can play. Um, so it's like Kevin Corden, isn't it? He brought his game against Angus and Carlong. Um, and then subsequently next as well. So he's beaten players significantly ranked higher than he is. And, you know, he's able to just bring the game he's just able to bring the game and and you want that um and i think kevin's playing himself into the game now you know he's he's playing he's picking up a lot more of ginting's shots um and we're halfway through the second game hello from vietnam yes always good to have you on the channel thank you for all your support hi kevin who are you taking for the gold medal match? <laughs> yeah, I th yeah, I was, I was just discussing early on. Um, Chen Long, I don't think was a was a big favorite coming to into the Olympics. However, Chen Long is a defensive player, a really, really stable, a very accomplished one. Victor is an out and out attacking player. We should be expecting a really good match. Um, I think if I mean gold medal matches don't necessarily bring the best games. You know, it, you just have to be able to pull it out the bag. And finish first. Absolutely, Sanban. Hello, good to see you. Olympics are always filled with upsets, so we often see otherwise dominant players underperform at the Olympics. Absolutely, you know, because badminton is not a, an event where, like, perhaps even swimming or um, running or athletics, you know, you're not competing against a time. So, for example, if you know that you can hit a certain time where no one else can, you know you will win. Badminton isn't like that, and then you know everyone brings the game, and it fluctuates because obviously you can't play every single shot perfectly, at every, under every single condition. Oh, look at those deception, um, and it's always like a live wire, live changing situation, fluid. And we've just literally seen Kevin and Anthony just absolutely playing two amazing net shot pickups, as well as half court smashes, and it comes back. You know, so it's absolutely incredible to watch. Different type of game. We're not based on time or speed. It's someone that's opposite side of the net. And you have to be able to beat him or her on the day. Or a mixtable pair, you know. Absolutely. Speaking of Kevin, what reason did it stop at the quarterfinals? Yeah, they just never got the game going, isn't it? So they played Aaron Chia and So Yik. So obviously me being Malaysian... Obviously, I you know I really support um, Aaron Chia and So Weak and re would really love for them to win. They got a medal, so you know really happy with that. Um, yeah, so I, I watched a little bit of that match and I thought it was a bit stop and start. Obviously, no one wants to give away the lift because you know Kevin's always at the front. Um, you don't want to let him take the shot at all. You know, catch a shot <laughs> ever if you can. Um, so. Yeah, he's just keeping the shuttle low. Every time he crosses the the net cord, slice it, slice under it, just to try and keep the shuttle low. And move, move it around. Um, Gideon's solid, um, but perhaps you know he's not spectacular, I guess. But then they're a combination. You know, they're significantly more powerful as a pair, front and back, even in defense, side by side as well. But if you take one of them out of the equation, um, the pair's effectiveness goes down significantly. And I guess you know. Like you said, um, like we said early on in the stream, pressure is a weird thing. Being able to perform at these really big events, it's a weird thing that some players do better than others. You know, for example, someone like Kevin Corden here, he's obviously a big, big tournament player. He brings it big time. So that's the type of player he is. Um, so, you know, just even in this match as well, um, Anthony Ginting went into the break with a decent lead. The lead has now shrunk a little bit. It's growing again, 15-10 currently. Um, 
Hi, Kevin. Yes, what do you think about the Malaysian national team's performance as a whole in this Olympics? Yeah, I thought it was it was good. I thought it was it was actually on par with performance. You know, so who have we got that's here at the Olympics? So Sonia Chia. So unfortunately, one of her opponents got injured, um, so she didn't play one of her matches. And against Ratchanok, she got a game off Ratchanok. So I thought that was really really good. Um, and then in the men's singles, Li Zijia. In his group matches, he played amazingly well. But obviously, the play, the caliber of players that he played in the in the group stages isn't as high as, say, you know, someone like Ginting or Chen Long. Um, Brees is a really, it, I always consider Brees as a dark horse. He always has upsets on his cards. You know, he will always have an upset or two in every single big tournament he plays. You know, he, he's a really dangerous player. Um, so I rate Brees very highly. Um, and then, you know, when. He plays Chen Long, uh, Li Zijia, when he played Chen Long. Chen Long just restricted his game, you know, just really kept kept Li Zijia just picking up shuttles, um, not being able to play Zijia's attacking game as efficiently as he could. So, well played Chen Long. And then in the doubles, I think, yep, Aaron and Wei Yik did as best they could. I think a bronze a bronze is a, is a really good result. I think they should be really, really proud of themselves. Um, you know, they're still very young. They have a lot of chances, and you know, if they can build from there, just keep the head high. Um, a lot of support from the coaches, um, from themselves, and belief. Oh, sorry, um, Kevin and Anthony just had a really good rally, and Anthony picked up a really, really good shot, dive in, pick up. Um, that is bad luck for Kevin Corden. That's what. Morton said that's actually true um, yeah so if we go back to mixed doubles yeah Champion Sun Go Liu Ying for, for Malaysia Unf unfortunately unfortunately um, Liu Ying is injured um, yeah I think and it's not their first Olympic as well so obviously they're a silver medalist at the last Olympics you know I think they can consider their options going forward there are plenty of options for them it's not like they're bad players they're really really good players high end players so they can you know, they should sit down, have a rest, maybe something, uh, reassess the situation, and see how how we go, how they go from there. And I think Chao Mei Kwan, Li Meng Yen in women's doubles, they can only go up. You know, like I've watched a few of their matches, um, not in this Olympics, um, prior to the Olympics, and they can always keep building. They're still very good players. They're still quite young, physically perhaps. They need to develop even more, get stronger, get faster, be able to hit a bit harder. Um, but no reason they can't make it. You know, so I think generally, the Malaysian national team did quite well. Um, I'm 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 really proud of their achievements. I think they're really really good. Um, what are my thoughts on the Chinese national team? Yeah, see, so talking about online abuse. Um, so I had some of this as well back in the back in back in March with what happened with the COVID restrictions. Um, I got a lot of the abuse on, I think, one of my videos um, that I predicted before the All England. So I had a prediction, tournament pred prediction videos. And obviously, once whatever that happened at the time there happened, you know, like, so I, even I got abuse online. Um, and see that, as sports fans, that we should not be able to do that. Like, that is actually not okay. Because you support every single player that you like. But sometimes in situations where it's out of our control, it's not my fault that I made a video and talked about it even before something like this happened. You know, so it's it's not OK. It, that That is not support because, you know, that that is discrimination. You know, you have to be able to if you like badminton, you like it. You like the sport. You, you, you support the players, but you like the sport. It's not okay to, to, to give someone abuse over anything that they couldn't support. And they're, and they're players, so, you know, players pay to win. Why else would you be there? You know, so it's not okay, uh, something like this. And so I'm not sure. Well, I haven't seen too many. Um, I haven't seen too much of the absolute harassment um, that the Chinese fans gave the Taiwanese or Japanese players online but that's not okay something going forward hopefully we can do something about it something's not okay and we're, we're watching this bronze medal match and it's finished Ginting Anthony Ginting has won his match they congratulate each other 
Well done to both players. Kevin Corden's got a fairy tale journey, fairy tale draw. Anthony Ginting, well done with his coach. So he's got a bronze. Um, obviously, he would like to be competing in the next match. Um, in the goal for the gold medal match. Um, but Anthony Ginting certainly is a big game player. I really always enjoy watching him play. Hello, StarTech. Hi, how are you? Yeah, absolutely. He played well, you know, he played well today. Granted, Kevin is an A World Tour 571,000 regular, but still, you still have to beat someone that's, you know, on the court with you on that day. And having a medal is something that he should be very proud of, you know, something that everyone strives to, all the top end players really want. It's not an easy sport to even qualify, much less has have a get a medal out of it. Kevin Corden should also be very proud of himself. You know, he it's not easy to beat a lot of very highly ranked players above you. Um, you know, being able to bring it on multiple days, bring his game, he brought his game, he brought it. Absolutely. Uh, so he should be absolutely very proud. Um, Jill commentating is also saying the same thing. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi, StarTech. Absolutely. Well, um, hi, Vu. Yes. Do you think Anthony Ginting will be the next Indonesian man to earn a gold medal one day? See, the the Indonesian team is always really, really strong. Um you know that they're always favourites going into any big tournament, regardless if you know if it's the Olympics, the Thomas Cup, Sudaman Cup, um, or even uh, the Asian Games. You know they're they're always a traditionally very strong team, and they've always had really really good top end players. Um, so they're always you know considered. I I think so. Ginting Ginting's got medals out of these big major tournaments. Obviously, I think Jonathan Christie. Um, got the Asian Games gold last time round, I believe. Um, but still, you know, hey, do not count Ginting out. Ginting's always really, really good. I really enjoy watching him play all the time. So let's let me pick up some more comments here. So here, whilst you're playing some a bit more highlights from the bronze medal match. So let me follow up some section. I'll take some of this out because Jill Jill been. In, it's talking into my ear. <laughs> I'm struggling to focus on, you know, multiple screens and comments as well. So which final do you think has been the biggest upset so far? Lian Wang beating uh, Lian Liu was a huge for me. Huang Yachong. Yes. Wang Yulu, Huang Yachong beating Zheng Siwei and Huang Yachong. That Huang, Wang Tongping. Yes, Huang Tongping. So Wang Yulu, Huang Tongping beating Zheng Siwei, Huang Yachong was massive. Yes, yeah, so I watched that one and I was really, I was so happy that Wang Yulu, Huang Tongping won because they've always come second best in almost, you know, in almost every single tournament final that they meet. Uh, Zheng Siwei, Huang Yachong. Don't get me wrong, Zheng Siwei, Huang Yachong are absolutely incredible players. Um, you know, I've watched Zheng Siwei live in person uh, many times and the stuff he does is <laughs> you just don't think it's human you know you, you just don't think it's possible for someone to be able to do that um i remember also watching the all england final where yuta watanabe and arisa higashino won their first all england for the first time that one that was also against Zheng siwei and huang Yachong, and that was an an incredible match but i'm really happy for wang yulu uh, Huang Tongping to be able to to won. Um, yep, so let's play a game. This is not about Tokyo 2020, but about Rio 2016. Yeah, it's very hard to say, isn't it? Um, I think Momota being suspended for um, the for Japan's illegal gambling laws. Pff, that's not something that we can you know, that we can comment on, you know. Um, it is unfortunate that he was suspended, um, unfortunately. But I guess the flip side, the good side of, out of it was, you know, he's multiple world champion. Is he multiple world champion? He's a world champion now. I think he's won two. Is that correct? Two world championships since his suspension. And also, you know, he's got the, is that the record for the most world tour tournament wins in a single year? Is that like 11 or something like that? So... 
I guess that's the good side. He, his his club um, did not kick him out. They continue to train. Uh, I believe he's with the NTT East team. Um, you know, so he continued to train well, you know, polished up his basic skills, continue becoming a much stronger player. So I think if you watch him before his suspension and watch him now, he's a significantly fitter, stronger player uh, compared to pre-suspension so so i guess that's the plus and minuses but like but yeah like i said the olympics is a is a very it's a, it's a weird one because it only happens every four years five years in this cycle um and there's significantly added pressure i think having a home olympics it's kind of like a double-edged sword you don't know you know you don't know what's going to happen you really don't know what's going to happen like the, the pressure to perform could be too much but some people really thrive on those pressures really enjoy you know being able to perform i think not not having a crowd behind you i think is working against the home players so obviously i think before the before the olympics started japan came out and said that they were targeting three goals and you look at five finals none of them had a japanese pair or player in them um you know, you would you would think Momota was a decent bet for a medal, not necessarily gold, but decent bet for a medal. You would think women's doubles, they would have at least two out of the three medals. Uh, Yuta Watanabe, hopefully, you know, could be able to go all the way to the, to gold in his men's doubles as well. So, and that didn't happen, but he did pick up a medal. Um, so yeah, you know, it's. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Obviously, every single nation, every single player that's come to the Olympics will conduct a review. You know, some will turn out favorably, some will turn out not as good. Um, yes. So, which results so far disappointed me the most? For me, it's Tai Ying. Why? So, Tai Ying, Nozomi Okuhara, and Mark, Mark Lamsfus and Isabel Hetrich losing. I remember the match where Marks Lamsfus and Isabel Hertrich, I think they played against the Hong Kong pair, Tang Chun Man and Zing Suet. Whoever wins goes through, and that was a tight three-ender. Um, I didn't watch the match itself, but I looked at the scores um, at that point and go, oh, that's tight. It, it's it's tough. I mean, sport, it's cutthroat, right? As, especially at this highest level. Um, everyone wants to win. You do whatever it takes to win. Um I'm not sure if any results disappointed me. Let me quickly have a quick look at the results. Um, in the meantime, let me see. In the women's singles, previous Hindu was unable to get gold or silver. She got bronze. Yeah, so I think... so. Sindhu got a medal in the last Olympics, didn't she? And then it's obviously she along with... Wait, did Sindhu get a medal? No, Sind PV Sindhu did not get a medal in, in the last Olympics. Carolina Marin got gold. Okuhara got bronze. I think it was Sindhu that actually got silver. So, so yeah, so she's actually she's got a medal. Um, yeah. It. I think a medal at the Olympics is an amazing achievement, regardless of of who you are and and how we think of it. And some sometimes I think. Um, the media or commentators or us fans just made it look like, oh yeah, if a certain player that we like didn't win a medal, like to say didn't win a goal, then the crap. They're not. <laughs> They're not. Any medal, any medal at the Olympics or any medal in a big tournament is an amazing achievement. And we should support the players as fans. You know, you're not a real fan if you don't support your team or your player when they're losing. You know, you only support them when they're winning. That's not cold support. That's conditional support. You know, that's not real support. Um, so obviously, um, going back to the, the screen, currently the match, I think the line judges are just coming in to the gold medal match. Um, we are going into the gold medal match now. It is against Victor Axelson and Chen Long. So let me turn down the volume in my ear. Yeah, so going back to the support, yeah, we should be supporting the players uh, regardless if they're winning or losing. If they're losing, we need to be supporting them even more, you know. Um, so yeah, they're doing all they can. No one, no one is, you know, no one is there just to cruise. Um, they're all there f on merit, and they're all there for a reason. And you know, yeah, I think some some results might not go the way that we like it too. 
There we go, Vic Victor Axelson is coming out onto court. Hi, John. Yes, so unfortunately, I can't show you the live stream because I'm not a broadcaster. I have not paid for the rights to show you the match itself. Um, so obviously, so I'm based in the UK and even the BBC, they had to buy their rights from a company called Discovery, which has all the rights to the pan-European countries. Um, and yeah, so BBC is not showing it because they can only show two sports at any one time. So I paid for my subscription to watch this. So unfortunately, yes, Sandman. No, no, I, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, I was quite sad with Chan Ping Soon and Goal Yu Ying's uh, matches. Um, you know, obviously I, I liked them as a pair. Um, and I think, uh, well, Chan Ping Soon is from Penang as well, which I originally was from. And I believe, I think my mum might have taught him in school when he was in primary school. So, you know, so so he has a little, he has a place in my heart. Um, and yeah, and I think, yeah, I was quite sad to see that they don't get enough support back home, uh, back in Malaysia. Uh, you know, the Malaysian fans, they're quite cutthroat, quite tough to deal with. Um so I hope they get more support. I certainly support them a lot. Um, it's tough to make it as a professional in badminton, um, you know. Yeah, hi, John. Unfortunately, I don't think we're, we're going to be able to have a stream <laughs> link on here unless someone provides you with one. Not that I condone something like that. Um, so Victor and Chen Long have gone through the toying course and they are going to have a quick two minute knock up, you know, just to get used to the conditions again. Uh, they, they've obviously had a really, really good warm up uh, behind, the, behind the stage, just coming onto it. Um, Victor and Chen Long, you know, Victor is an amazing superstar in badminton. Um, he speaks Mandarin alongside English and Danish. Uh, I'm not sure what any other languages he speaks, I'm aware of, um, but you know, he's a big star both in Asia, especially in China and in Denmark as well, everyone Everyone loves him. Um, he speaks really, really good Mandarin. If you if you ever find out, uh, if you can ever listen to him speak, he's really, really good. Um, he's played five matches so far. Uh, Luca Weber, Kale Koyonen, Wang Zuwei, Shi Yuqi, and Kevin Corden. All 2-0. So no three-enders yet. Um, yeah, so Malaysian fans are quite tough to deal with because I, I think... Because um, Malaysia, badminton is very widely played in Malaysia. Everyone understands the game. Uh, everyone plays the game, or a lot of people plays the game. Um, people have very high expectations. And sometimes I think it's um, it's not in line. It's not realistic. Realist, it's not realistic expectations. Um, or maybe, I'm not sure if it's the media or something, you know. For example, like Dr. Lee Chong Wei, you know, people sometimes say, oh yeah, he's he's never won gold. But you can't expect him to win gold in every single tournament you know he's also human and if you be if, if you meet a better player on the day you know, like Chen Long or Lin Dan then the better player wins it's just a fact isn't it you can't say that oh yeah he's crap because he's lost to he's not had a gold medal he's I, I don't think he's he's not crap he's a legend of the sport you know um we need to be quite objective and realistic with with our support and when they lose we should support them even more you know so Kenneth Yonason who's on the Victor Axelson's bench I think they're done with the knock-up let me quickly grab a drink before the match starts so yeah so I think Malaysian fans have unrealistic expectations sometimes you know they expect every single player to win and beat every single person um, every single player on the planet and that's not a realistic expectation. Um, it's 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 very hard to say, um, but I hope you know, as time grows, you know, we learn how to support players even better um, on and off the court. You know, we we love badminton because we enjoy seeing them playing. They 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 do something that we can't do, you know, on court, and it's something that we should appreciate that for. There we go. So. This is the gold medal match. Um, Chen Long against Victor Axelson, two really strong, physically very strong player, 
players. Chen Long's a more defensive type, stability. Um, whereas Victor is 100% all out attacking. Chen Long is the sixth seed. Victor Axelson is the fourth seed. Bring it. There we go. Chen Long serving. Love all. So hopefully you can sync your stream along with mine. Um, Kevin, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's an optimum height thing. You know, previously everyone said, oh yeah, whoever that's Lin Dan's height is the best for badminton. I don't think that works because obviously Chen Long and Victor is showing that significantly taller players, you know, play even better, you know, play better. Um, they work as hard and, you know, there's always things that you can work to make sure to overcome whatever weakness that is. You know, being a tall, being tall in badminton is certainly not a weakness. I've, I've played against really tall players and it's not a weakness for them, put it this way. <laughs> They're going to hit really hard, longer levers, steeper angles. So definitely not not something that is a, considered a weakness. So I'm listening to Morton and Jill on the commentary discussing, you know, what kind of tactics um, will will decide the match today. Um, oh, on the equipment side of things, I thought it was quite um, unique that now that the Chinese badminton team is sponsored by Yonex again, but Chen Long is still with Li Ning. Both, you know, rackets, shoes, um, I think the socks as well. Um, so, yeah, he might have had a unique agreement with Leaning and the Chinese Badminton Association to be able to continue playing with his preferred side of equipment, which is Leaning. Um, perhaps there's a financial agreement as well on, in there. And Victor is obviously Yonex through and through, although the Danish Badminton team is sponsored by Victor. So Victor is playing with the Yonex Astrox 100ZZ, um, a really, really nice track to play with, head heavy, um, it says extra stiff, but it's quite pliable. So, you know, so it's really, it's a really nice rack to play with. Power shots are really, really, you know, easy, very smooth swing. And we're currently 3-1. So Victor's 3, Chen Long's 1, getting into the game. Oh, what an incredible cross cut smash from Chen Long. Round ahead. So that's 2-3. Sports like basketball, there's clear advantage given to tall players due to the rules of the game. Yeah, so, you know, so I think having a large variation, having variety in any in anything is great. So, you know, it's really good to see players like um, Okuhara, Nozomi Okuhara, Akana Yamaguchi. Um, you know, if you watch them play live, it is incredible how much, how fast they are. And, you know, like, Players like Anthony Ginting, you can see he's absolutely rapid um, on the court, you know, in pace of movement as well. And then it's really great to see players like Chen Long and Victor Axelson, you know, who's larger build, um, but physically very, very strong to be able to allow them to move, twist and turn really well in the court. Um, it's really, really good. I, I really like diversity in in every single category. And, and I think it's it's... It's incredible to watch. Yeah, so um, Sandman, yes, extra stiff but pliable. So the racket that Victor is playing, the Astrox 100ZZ, it's rated as extra stiff. However, um, when you are swinging with it, so um, you can actually feel that the shaft is actually responding to how you are swinging. It's, so typically extra stiff rackets sometimes are quite hard to play with, so they're not the most user-friendly rackets. But the Astrox 100ZZ is quite easy to play with um, for an extra stiff racket. So I would consider that. Uh, so I use my term. I call it the pl pliable extra stiff. Um, and they're actually really nice to play with. Really easy to play with for an extra stiff racket. Um, you can watch some of my review videos of the Astrox 100ZZ. Uh, I've been recently comparing them to the, the more cost-effective, cheaper version, the Astrox 100 tour as well as the 100 game um so yeah so check them out on the on the channel and let me know what you think flick serve already out wide so we're currently 4-3 victor 4 chen long 3 
half court. Ooh. Five three. Victor currently leading. A lot of attacking shots coming from Victor. I think maybe Chen Long, one of Chen Long's tactics might be to make sure that every single rally or as 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 many of the rallies are uh long rallies, Duo Pai. So, you know, just drag the rally out, keep the rally in, just keep it going. Victor being a taller, taller man might struggle later in the game, you know, if we get to three ends, um, you know, Victor's head, Victor's confidence might be swayed a little bit. Um, Chen Long just looks like he's on a Sunday cruise currently, um, whereas Victor is a bit more agitated, a bit more emotional, as you can see. Um, from the aesthetic point of view, what is my favorite racket? Yeah, so um, the matte finishes so matte finishes on rackets so for example i really like the nanoflare 800s finishing um, i'm currently reviewing the nanoflare 800 light and that that racket's visuals is incredible i, I really really like that um, matte rackets looks really really cool the kurenai color scheme red red is always very very good it looks good on 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 the rackets it looks good on people so yeah i, I really like that matte finishing it's it's really cool um yes the 88d pro um that also looks quite good with the kind of copper brown or is it orange a blend of each with its blue um, i really like the playing feel of the 88d pro i really enjoy playing with that um also you know head heavy racket but very easy power um so really really good to play with um, the Lee Chong Wei edition, I think I've only seen it a few times. It, um, I've not seen it in the UK yet. Um, I know it's on sale. I've just not seen it in person. Um, but yeah, I, I just couldn't get along with the Asterix 99. Um, it's way too heavy. Its head feels way too heavy for me. So, ooh! Oh, so, so Chen Long's playing really well. Um, he's picking up a lot of Victor's smashes, but I have a feeling that Victor's not putting full pace on those smashes, going for angles um, a lot more, because obviously he's aware that Chen Long is amazing at with his defensive game, and he'll be able to pick up. And Victor needs to be able to pick up the third shot from his smash in case Chen Long turns it. So both making each other turn. So Chen Long's playing a lot of diagonals, long diagonals. So net shots. It's currently six all. Whew. Right. So we're currently seven six. Chen Long now in the lead. So how come they don't show the smash speeds um, like they used to back in the day? So. Um, this, I don't know, so I can't answer this, this question, but obviously Hawkeye is present um, at these tournaments, and, and I think, but there's also a significantly complex, significant complex in terms of complexity to measure uh, a, sh a shuttle, because the speeds that we are seeing, so the shuttle shuttlecock is not like a ball, so it's... Um, design it to aerodynamically slow down significantly as soon as it's hit so you know i'm not sure how what's the measuring concept of whatever speeds that were shown it could be the fastest point or fastest speed from whatever its measurement region is so for example like if victor hits a half court smash so the fastest point of the shuttle would be the first few inches of that and then as soon as you know maybe not even first few inches immediately after leaving the racket anything after that is significantly slowed down um, i've recently also done a video uh, teaching us how to measure our own smash speeds or our, our own shuttle speeds um, using a free software um, and you can try that for yourself and then you know from those measurements i was able to see significantly that the shuttle dies the shuttle speeds die really really rapidly after that um, so I, so i'm not sure yeah why they're not showing the smash speeds, but it is very hard to measure them, I put it this way. And in a live event, in a live situation event, yeah, I guess there are significantly harder to produce, you know, like 
the rallies go on and then you have that 15 second block in between commentators and you know also in between the rallies whilst the player gets gets ready to serve again you know that period of time to be able to produce that that number that eight, that uh, that number and if you want it to be absolute number then that's quite challenging although i would love to see it so we're currently 9-7 chen long is leading you can see that he is controlling the rallies quite well um trying to restrict victor's full power attacking ability moving victor around although victor just got a really good block on one of chen long's downward shots and be able to finish that with a crisp smash down the line eight nine victor eight chen long nine uh how can I do yeah so what is chen long's racket i actually don't know um I know he's he's playing with leaning leaning rackets. So if anyone here that's watching with us know what Chen Long is playing with, uh, please put them in the chat box so we can all learn what Chen Long is actually playing with. So Chen Long's lost two points in a row um, on his forehand side, based off smashes. But then Victor needed a, not just a single smash to win; it was a, a combo. Smash down, four inside wide, picked it up, Victor crossing the net, so making Chen Long go across the long diagonal, not as good lift, poor lift, short, Victor putting it down, straight down. I guess it might it might be changed into a cross fairly soon. Nine all, all to play for. Short serve. So in this rally, so in the so this rally is nine all. So now it's now ten nine to, to Victor. Um, it is quite unique to see both players playing half half pushes. So I'm not sure if you know what I mean by half pushes. So half pushes are it's not a full lift, but it's also not a net shot, but it's also not a doubles half court push. So it's kind of like a half. So it's just high enough that I can't reach it when 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 I stretch out my arm. So, but I can't just take it just like that. I need to get behind it. So it's it's just half pushes, just slightly out of reach where the players need to readjust their position to get to the shot before continuing in there. Let me try and listen to the coaches. So Chen Yu saying to Chen Long in in discussion, I caught I caught two talking points from there. Um, so one of it he said was on Chen Long's forehand net shot side of things when he's taking it on his forehand side. Um, just you know he he needs to be aware because he said that Victor is actually looking for for that net shot is at the block net shot side of things. Um, he's really really looking for that. Um, so he needs to make sure that. He does it with purpose, with interest, not just net shot, you know. So he needs to be really be aware of that. And then he says Victor's net shots or blocks are longer into the court, so deeper into the court. So if you look at the, the net, sometimes, so a net shot like a Momotas is a pin drop, isn't it? They call it a hairpin, which is tight to the net. Uh, he said what Victor's doing is quite deep into the court. So he needs to be aware that if Victor's net shots are pushed quite deep into the court, then he's waiting for that lift to come. So, so, so Chen Yu is telling Chen Long to be really be careful with that. And then the next thing Chen Yu said to Chen Long was, um, with your serve, with your service, take it easy. You know, don't rush. Just, just play it point by point. Change the rhythm up a little bit, you know. Um, we, we have an advice to, to players where, you know, when you're ready to serve, count one or two or three. Sometimes you can count one, serve. Sometimes you hold it, count one, two, three, and you serve. Change the rhythm a little bit. But you said to Chen Long, just take it easy. Take it point by point, you know, and then go from there. So, hi, John. Good to have you here. Um, who do you think will win? 
<laughs> well, that's why we're, we're watching, right? Um, I think both players are, are incredible players. Um, whoever wins will be well-deserved. Um, so Sandman, Chen Long uses the leaning 3D caliber 900. Thank you very much. And we now know. Um, is it a headlight or even balance or a head heavy racket? Because I remember Chen Long used to play with the N93, isn't it? Uh, before he swapped onto something that is perhaps not as head heavy as that. Whew, Victor is making Chen Long twist and turn big time in his deep forehand side of things and then playing a block, straight block with perfect precision um, on there. Um, so one minute. Thirteen ten, Victor is leading. So Chen Long is actually attacking more um, after the interval. Victor is doing a lot more defending since then. Yes, I still use the Arc Saber Ten, John. <laughs> the Arc Saber Ten is my is my racket. I think I might have had it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I play with the Arc Saber Ten, old school. Um, yeah. So I I really like it, and I and I enjoy playing with it. So yes, I do play with the Art Saber Ten. And hello, Dread. Good to have you on the stream. Victor might just edge it. They're both on it. <laughs> you know, absolutely both going for it. Absolutely. So and yes. Yeah, so what is a punch clear? So the, a punch clear is a rear court to a rear court short. So for example, if you go onto the right. A forehand side rear court, they punch clear straight. So it's a uh, in, in Mandarin they call it Gao Yun Chu. Um, you know, so punch clear from straight rear court to rear court. It can be cross court, but punch clear is a flatter attacking rear court to rear court shot. Oh, Victor is on the net, hunting it, absolutely pouncing on the show. So suddenly there's a little gap now, 15, 11. Big body smash coming in. Oh, unsighted. So Hawkeye will be doing the judging for us. Chen Long did say that it's out. So Chen Long having a drink, I'll have a drink too. Official review, yep, it was out. So Chen Long now reducing the deficit 12 15. So I think one thing that I really noticed from the very, very top players uh, in comparison to top players, um, for example, like Victor and both Chen Long, um, it's a discussion always at the interval, not just the coaches saying one thing to them and then they just. Uh, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. no no or something but it's a discussion often between them uh, between the players and the coaches because I guess you know whatever the coaches is saying the players need to be able to agree with that absorb it before being able to execute it um, you know I think it, it, it really promotes them thinking for themselves and reacting onto the on, on court because the coaches oh Victor's challenging here and he has got an in really good challenge um, but, you know, so so going back to the discussion about a discussion from the player with the coaches, you know, I think that's how they come to a better agreement and they can absorb it a lot faster, um, buy into that process, buy into that why this is a better option to do. And plus, a coach is only on court twice in a game. You know, once in the at the interval, once after the game. So you know, once it's after the game, it's too late. It's good if you've won. It's bad. It's it's bad if you lost. You know, so there's only that one minute, few seconds that you have with the coach. Might as well maximize it. This is uh, this is an incredible rally that's going on. Sixteen twelve. Okay. 
three quarter lift. Ooh. Certainly the longest rally of the match now. Um, Victor got that point, so 17-12. Playing well, playing really well. Driving. <laughs> Chan Long's a bit um, disappointed with that. The shuttle going in. Um, he knows, oh, could have played it. He could have played it. Um, so yeah, so maybe Chen Long needs to apply more pressure during the service situation to Victor. I think this is also what uh, Jill and Morton are discussing currently. Um, so thank you, Sandman. So leading caliber 900 is a 4U racket. What a pickup from Victor. So for you, head heavy, medium stiff. Nice. Thank you ever so much. Um, yeah, so I'm finding more and more players are using lighter rackets. So for example, I have realized there are a few players. So I'm, so my next video I'm, I'm working on is I'm going to tell you what players are playing with, uh, predominantly with your next rackets um, at the Olympics. And I've, in my research, I've come across a few players playing with a 5U model racket. So which is significantly lighter than a traditional 3U racket. Um, you know, so players, big smashes as well, players like Li Junhui from the men's doubles, silver medal winning pair, he plays with a 5U Nanoflare 800 light. And you go, head blown. He hits very hard and he's playing with a 5U racket. Um, I think Herbing Zhao is also playing with a 5U Nanoflare 800 light as well. Although a month ago at the Chinese uh, national team Olympic simulation, she was playing with a Nanoflare 800. So I'm not sure if that was a 4U or a 5U model. Um, but Nanoflare 800 doesn't come in a 5U. So yeah, so she's swapped, she's swapped from a Nanoflare 800 onto a 800 Lite. So onto a 5U racket. So wow. You know, so, yeah, so racket te technology has moved on now. Um, it's all about the swing speed, racket head speed, being able to transfer those power onto the shuttle. Victor is smashing incredibly well here, and he's got a, a decent lead now. He's got a decent lead. He's got a decent lead. He looks good. Chen Long's trying to G himself up. 19-13. Ooh, what a net shot by Victor. Short lift. Put it down onto the line. Oof. No chance. 2013. Plenty of game points. For Victor Olsen. Almost one game to the good. Oh, what a defense, Chen Long. So just a step up, straight line, smash. Chen Long literally whips it cross court from his back and side onto Victor's back and side. And puff. 14 20. So hello to everyone who's just joined us. So we're currently watching the men's singles match against from um, Chen Long against Victor Axelsen. Chen Long from China, Victor Axelsen from Denmark. Um, this is a gold medal match. Uh, we have finished watching the bronze medal match from uh, Anthony Ginting of Indonesia against Kevin Corden from Guatemala with Anthony Ginting winning the bronze medal. Uh, so this is now the main big match, the last match actually of Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, 15, 20, Chen Long down five points. We've got a half court, three quarter smash going on. Victor putting down the power. Chen Long lost the first game. So Victor is with a shout to finish that, that game. So 21, 15. So Gillian Clark saying the first game took 25 minutes. 
swapping ends. Let's try and listen in to see if we can hear anything the coaches are saying. So we're currently in the interval change of ends. So I can't understand Danish, <laughs> but I can I can see Kenneth and Victor having a little discussion, saying yes or no from Victor. He's got a little he's got his little ice bag on his hand. I hope Morton is going to be translating for us um, later on after listening in on to the conversations between Kenneth and Victor. Oh, Chen Yu is talking to Chen Long. Chen Yu is telling Chen Long to believe in himself. So Chen Yu is telling Chen Long to believe in himself. Chen Long is saying, yeah, this is the last match. This is the last game. You know, what else is there left? Might as well. Let's go for it. Um, Chen Yu is saying, hell yeah. Come on. It's the last one. Go for it. Hello to everyone who's just joining us. So we are about to start the second game of the men's singles badminton final. Victor Axelson against Chen Long. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Fast and furious, first few shots. Really good opening rally. I wonder if it, might, if it might be the longest rally. Thank you, Sandman. <laughs> Do I have a favorite non-Big 3 racket manufacturer? Big fan of Ashaway and a few, a few days. Gina's Black Panther racket. Yeah, so um, obviously you can see from my channel, um, I currently review a lot of Yonex rackets. Um, they they generally well I generally prefer Yonex um, because I believe their rackets they have a better feel. So obviously I've played with uh, Victor and leading rackets in the past as well. Um, I do really like the uh, previously the Victor Brave Sword Twelves, um, the very first one, the blue ones, the first generation ones where I think Leon Day played with for a long long time um, because they're they're quite similar to Arc Saber Tens, but then they have a slightly more hollow feeling compared to. Uh, Yonex Rackets. Um, so I've not really tried any other high end outside of the big three um, much. I think Carlton, if if you consider that, I, I used to have one of those um, Carlton Rackets where the strings are wrapped around the outside of the frame on the three and nine o'clock position. Um, so yeah, so you know, Carlton. Um, I used to own that before giving that away. So currently Victor has a 3-1 lead. Chen Long does look a bit lost over the last two rallies. Oh, Chen Long's playing a lot more net shots. But he's making Chen Long really twist and turn. Victor driving it down the line, hold and push. Really well played by Victor. Really, really well played. So, oh, there's quite a few play people watching, actually. Um, could be the Danish contingent. Um, could be the VIPs. 
So this could be the very last game of the 2020 Olympics, although it's in 20, although we're in 2021 now. Um, you know, so Axelson looks like he's in absolute control. Chen Long's trying to chuck the washing machine at him and see what happens. Victor just needs to keep his head. Um, think every rally through. 5-1 lead. A decent lead. And he's served out wide. <sighs> yep, we did say this would happen. Um, you know, Victor, he is playing against himself a lot of the times, isn't it? And then in his, you know, his, his mental state of awareness... Um, it's such a fine line. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing player. But I, I guess if there's a weakness, that's the only one um, that I can think of. Technically, physically, tactically, Victor is absolutely amazing. He covers all the bases and he's an absolute professional. You can see, you know, he takes care of himself really, really well. Um... Yeah, so Chen Long's looking a bit confused and a bit lost halfway through the match. Currently, um, it's still salvageable. Um, we're still quite early into the match, you know, so um, a slight gap, 6-2 currently. Uh, but Chen Long is going for some of the shots, I think, way too early. It's very easy for us to say, sitting here. Um, so, yeah. So, Sandman, let us know what you feel about the J Nice Black Panther racket. Um, I've not heard of J Nice before, um, but Black Panther racket sounds cool already, you know. So, I hope it all comes good. I think receiving a new racket is like it's like it's like happy. It's always happy days. Um, happy day when new rackets come in. You know, regardless of what it is, um, we always get really excited. I well, I know I am. Really, really excited every time a new racket comes through the door. Um, you know, even currently, if I'm just reviewing rackets, um, when they when, when they come through the door, I get so excited. You're like, oh my god, new rackets! So yeah, turn long, three six second end. Good serve. Victor decides to drive back at Chen Long. Just guides into empty space. So, 4-6. Let me know if you guys like something like this, you know, um, watch along, you know, have a have some form of commentary um, going forward. Obviously, if you guys like something like this, you know, obviously I might be able to do a bit more when there are bigger tournaments going on as well. So Chen Long making Victor work really hard. Ooh, very steep round ahead stick shot. Six to mash from Victor. Hello, Ragav. So we've been trying to get the 88D Pro for doubles. 88D Pro. <laughs> I really, really like the 88D Pro. Um, I played with the 4U. So I normally play with the 3U racket. Um, and this is the first time, you know, like a 4U racket has really convinced me that 4U is the better option to go. Um, it's all about being able to generate the racket head speed for it to transfer its power um, onto the shuttle. Try it, you know, like I, I think you need to try the racket to actually know for sure. Uh, but now I'm convinced that a 4U is the way for me. Um, although the Arcsaber 10s are still in 3U, um, you know, so I think there might be a 4U Arcsaber 10. Um, I've not had a chance to try it. I'm not even sure if the UK has any in, in, in. Um, so I don't know, but try it. I would recommend 4U to start with. Um, if you're physically really, really strong and you enjoy the extra weight of it, 3U might be the way for you. Yeah, so hi, Dread. The Victor Ryuga... Um, so, yeah, where where are you watching from, Dread? Um, if you say that Victor Ryuga is not available in your country. But I'm sure there are quite a lot of online stores um, that you can buy from. Um, you know, like now online shopping is so easy, so so prevalent. 
um, and it's absolutely you know it should be straightforward and buying online to be able to to come you get, come buy them in. Yes, yes, I look forward to seeing your review on Reddit on um, Sandman. So show us some pictures as well. You know, Black Panther racket. Absolutely sounds incredible. <laughs> Where is Jay Nice from anyway? Is that is that a brand that is local to you know um, to any country? Aha, uh -huh. India. Oh, I'm so, I'll, I'll be surprised about that because you know, like for example, Ashwini Ponapa. She's sponsored by Victor, so I'm sure Victor has has a decent presence um, within India. Uh, I, I'm quite surprised that you can't get Victor Ryuga. Oh, Victor just had a fall. Seven five. So, I've just got a text from from Mark, um, who was in my second live stream. Um, so my previous live stream. So unfortunately, we tried to review the men's doubles Rio uh, match, men's doubles finals match. Um, obviously. YouTube very quickly took down our live stream because we were showing um, IOC content, so International Olympic Committee IOC content. So obviously, this is the same reason I can't show you the stream because you know we don't have broadcasting rights for uh, the match itself. So unfortunately, I cannot show you um, the the match itself because the broadcasting rights belong to IOC, and a lot of people have paid a lot of money for it. So. Yeah, it's only fair that they keep their broadcasting rights. So currently it is 8-6 to Victor. Oh, what a slice by Victor. Yeah, so yeah, unlike leaning and Yonex, Victor is not as big of a presence. Um, oh. yep, good to know. Um, do you think being in a bigger city makes a big difference to that? It could be the logistics side of things or the distribution side of things. Um, hopefully you can get it online as well. Uh, hopefully you can you can buy your dream racket online. Is that the racket that Lee Zija was playing with before? Uh, Team Malaysia went with went back to Yonex after being with Victor. That might be the racket that he was playing with when he won the All England earlier this year. So currently, <laughs> so Victor's Victor's keeping all the shows in on his smashes is incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, his angles were so steep and then catching a line or just literally next to the line. So, Jay Nice is Taiwanese. Nice. They seem to have a cup following. Nice. So, Victor is also Taiwanese and, and I know Victor also sometimes from time to time do, you know, uh, like Hello Kitty rackets or Transformers rackets. So, yeah. So, so it's actually cool to see uh, brands making um, rackets that we can't, we all have come to know and love from movies. Ooh. So Chen Long's missed a straight smash on his round ahead side of things and we are now 11-7 into the interval and it's a four point gap. So Chen Long's just missing his lines, Victor is absolutely on it. Let's see what Chen Yu has to say. So Chen Long is saying, I'm I'm trying to force the rally, and Chen Yu is saying, look, you 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 need to be you know you, you need to calm down, you need to be able to keep yourself at peace with yourself. And then 
so yeah, so Chen Yu's telling Chen Long, what well, Chen Long's saying, I'm trying to force the rally. I'm trying to, you know, get all put put in my good shots and put in, put in the finishing shots, I guess. And then Chen Yu's saying, look, like you you need to be at peace with yourself that you're playing a really high end top player, and good show, good shots are gonna come, you know. So your good shots isn't gonna be able to finish that, and you need to invest in the rally. He says you need to invest in the rally by playing long rallies. And then opportunities would be able to present themselves eventually. However, he says you need to be at peace with yourself and you know be honest with yourself. Um, so he says it's natural that a top end player is returning all your amazing shots. That's what you should be expecting. So he says, but be at peace with yourself and go for it. Victor is playing absolutely incredible right now. Chen Long's playing amazing shots and is all coming back. This is an incredible rally. This is the second rally after the interval. The first one was a cheap one, cheap point. Oh, this is a big point. This is a big point. Oh, that's an incredible rally. Whew. That was an incredible rally. That's a big one. That is a really, really big one. That's a really good point. Well lift, good lift as well. Yes, so the Ryuga is Lizzy Jazz. Good to know. And then thanks for your thoughts. Yep. Uh, how about three for singles? <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Um, so I actually find having an easier to play with racket in singles uh, work out better for me personally. Um, you know, being able to get out of trouble easier um, that really helps because having a racket that just gives you a lot of power on your attacking shots. Uh, what happens in those defensive situations or you know counter-attacking situations, sometimes you need to have, need to be able to have great, easy racket head speed um, in your counter-attacking or getting out of trouble, you know, digging out deep in the rear court. So, yeah, so sometimes, well, I, I would go for the lighter one myself, but then up, you should try it. You should absolutely try it. Yeah, so Chen Long's, really frustrated a, 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 a little bit more frustrated than usual i guess uh, but he is trying a lot of variety of shots you can actually see this is this is experience at the very highest level um you know you you cannot take it away victor is playing amazing he's 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 you know he's bringing it he's keeping the shuttles in his shots are all you know skimming the lines no crazy shots and it's just it's like a vice grip, isn't it? He's just twisting it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter as, as the rally goes on. You know, it's just adding more and more and more systematic pressure onto Chen Long, who is one of the best defensive players in men's singles, um, I guess perhaps in history, you know. And and Chen Long's not just going down without a fight. He is fighting, and that's why he's an Olympic champion. And it's... And we can now hear uh, there are Chinese teammates supporting Chen Long. So if Chen Long strings a few good points along and it gets tight, we'll have an amazing match. Not to say that the current match isn't. But yeah, so Chen Long is bringing it. He's laying it all out there. Ooh. Really aggressive from Chen Long in that instance. 9-15. Chen Long needs to be able to pull that out of the bag for a few more points. And Victor, he needs to keep his head on. Victor needs to keep his head on. Soak up all the pressure. No one gives you an Olympic win. You have to earn it. So Chen Long's got two points. Yeah, yes, Dread. I completely agree. Both top class players. You do not get to the Olympic final not being very good. <laughs> you know, both absolutely top class players. Um, you know, I had a little feeling that Chen Long in the second game 
um, after the first game interval, he said, look, this is the last one. I'm going to give him my all. Is that a sign that he's going to say he's retiring? You know, I, I mean, personally, I haven't read anything to say that he says he's going to retire post-Olympics. However, he is the current defending champion. It's not like this is his first Olympics. He is now in his 30s. Oh, so he's had a really good net shot and just missed it. Missed his cross court, smashed to Victor's round the head, backhand side, a little bit. So, hello, Mirganka. So the current score is 16-10 to Victor Axelsson. Uh, Victor is also one game up. So this could be the last few points at the Olympics. Chen Long's not going down without without a fight. He's certainly putting putting up a big fight. Victor has had really good deception. Hold and flick onto Chen Long's deep forehand. It's 17-10 now. Yeah, so Dread. Yeah, so probably maybe it is the last Olympics. Um, I hope he stays around for a little bit more. Um, he's also a dad now. To where um, his wife is Wang Shixian, who used to be China's ex top player. Um, yeah, so and and they've got a child, as do Victor. So Victor, oh, sorry, I think my battery has just cut out <laughs> for the camera. You can still hear me whilst I quickly change the battery. Hang on a little bit. Oh no, Miff. <laughs> Miff at all. Um, yeah, I mean, Zhou Tianzhen is good, but then at the Olympics, you, you come up against incredible players and you have to be able to beat them one by one. Sorry guys, we are currently almost at the end. Sorry about that. <laughs> We have a we have a little hiccup, technical hiccup. <laughs> so I think yeah, we're we're nearing the very end of the match. That was in. Um. Yes. So, yes, yes, Sandman. There's a, there's a lot more misjudgment. I think it's because of the... It is, it with the, it is inside quite a big stadium. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of drift. But then coming from a specific side of the court, isn't it? So coming from Chenlong's side of the court, um, players are actually... I think the drift is coming from Chenlong's side of the court onto Victor's. So a lift from Victor's side of things. It would be quite short. Oh! So we now have a lot of gold medal points here. We're on, we're currently on twenty twelve on my side. Um, yes, Hydred. There, 
a lot of so I personally haven't ordered from E78, um, but online I've seen lots of people ordering from E78 before and saying they have had really good experience. So why not? That's it, Victor Axelson. He just cannot believe it. I think Kenneth Jonasson's having a weak knees right now. And Victor is just literally crying. That's it's just. That's the dream, isn't it? That is absolutely the dream. And Victor is absolutely just... Oh, Victor's crying. Everyone, yep, is very, very emotional. Well done. I'm really happy for him. You know, Victor is a top, top player, top man. Olympic gold in badminton. It's a really big deal. Really, really, really big deal. They're speaking to each other, Chen Long and Victor. Victor and Chen Long swapping shirts, speaking in Mandarin, I'm sure. Well done, man. Well done. Well done, Victor. He's got he's got all the big big tiles all the way from world junior champion to to world champion European gold to now the Olympic champion. What an amazing player. And yes, Chen Long is absolutely quite the sportsman. You know, like he, I, I really always think Chen Long, you know, he, he's always the guy that is, you know, he's a stand-up guy. And I think he, he realizes, you know, on the day that if he's not good enough, he congratulates his, his opponent. This is really, yeah, an amazing Olympic spirit. Victor just to soak it all up, you know, he needs to soak it all up, just enjoy it. And, you know, he's worked all, all his life for this, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Victor is still outpouring. Um, yes. Well done. It's really good to see. Really, really, really good to see that Chen Long. Yep, Victor is completely overcome with emotion. I can't spot Victor's family in the crowd. He's going to hug his coaches, his team. You know, it's as as much as it's an individual event, but it's a it's a team, it's a team thing. Like you know, you can't make it on your own. It's incredible, really, really good to see. Um, hugging his team, congratulating. Have I <laughs> have you swapped shirts with someone after a match? Yeah, I'm I'm not that good of a player, <laughs> um, so I don't think I have personally. Um, no, so I haven't. Oh, it, oh, so he's going to the camera with a screen, and I'm sure that's his family. Yes, I think is that Victor's dad. He's still pouring, outpouring with emotion. So whilst we're replaying the final rally, you know, Chen Long's brought his all. And I thought Chen Long went a lot deeper in the tournament than than I was expecting, you know. So it, it all started with being Li Zijia, you know, his, his, his first big match. And... And it just, he he just kept he just kept on going. So it'll be it'll, it'll be really a shame to see him stopping, just like that. But but Chen Long has got everything. Like he's all won the big, he's won all the big tournaments. You know he he's got the Olympics. He's got the World Championships. He's got I'm sure the team events as well. 
Um, so he is a really accomplished player. So that don't take anything away from Chen Long. And above all, he's an amazing sports person. You know, he 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 he's always really calm. You know, he he's always really. I find him cool. Chen Long's a cool person on court. Off court, I'm I'm sure as well. Um, you know, he he's never one that shows bad temper or you know bad sportsmanship sportsmanlike conduct on court you know he's always he always smiles it off and you know even in rallies where it's incredibly like his opponent won the points you, you know in in some in some previous past tournaments we we see him just go yeah well done you know props credit where credit's due and and he's the, he's the type of guy and so it's incredible to to have him um, as an olympic player So whilst the whilst we're going through some of the replay, I think in preparation for the prize giving medal ceremony, uh, we'll we'll stay on a, a little bit more, um, especially now that I've swapped onto a new battery on the camera. <laughs> um, yes, I think uh, yes, dread. You know all the efforts, all the sacrifice that that every single player has to put in to get to this stage. You know, not not necessarily just Victor. Um, I think everyone sacrifices a lot. You know, Chen Long also has a young kid, also has a young family. Um, you know, so many players, uh, you know, ha having to really sacrifice a lot of their lives just to get to the stage. You know, you train for your whole life. You play for something like this. And yeah, you know, well-deserved, really well-deserved. Incredible, incredible badminton. Um, you know, Victor's not really made many errors. Victor's just kept it in, kept the show in. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty, you know, in a in a final, you know, or in any point. It, it, it's not all. It's not about your start. It's about where you finish. And we're replaying the moment where Victor won. Won again, and yeah, it's it's it, it's it's emotional. I mean, I've got goosebumps just just watching it again. And it's yeah, it's been a really good match. Um, hello, Stuck. Um, what do you think about Astrox 100ZX with BG80? So, um, obviously, I did not put, a, I did not publish um, a single video on the Astrox 100ZX, um, although I have recorded and filmed it all, um, but I haven't released it. Um, what I thought about the 100ZX was, um, so the sample I had was a 3U version, and I felt it was very heavy. So heavy as in like overall of the racket. So it's not like the racket was, the head was extremely heavy or something. It was like overall, it was quite stiff. It was quite heavy. It's quite hard to play with um, unless you're a really, really strong player. Uh, you know, someone who has a, who's, you know, who's physically really strong and be able to wield the racket. Um, I thought it felt quite similar to the 100 Tour, which is quite new. So it's the Yonex's new marketing, I guess, uh, of a model so for example like the hundred and then they have four categories of the rackets so currently there's only three but i believe they'll be launching another one on the bottom end of the scale so currently we've got the pro model which is the 100 zz which is what victor is absolutely he's playing with and then you've got the tour model and then tour and the game model currently released i believe there'll be a, another one down the line which is called play um so yeah so i thought the tour felt very similar to the Astrox 100 ZX. Um, even visually, when I was able to compare them, they looked very, very similar in terms of frame design uh, and in terms of also, you know, the decals and the optics are all around it. So I thought they felt very similar, but you should try it, you know. Um, String-wise, BG-80, you know, it's a, it's, it's a top string. Personally, I don't, I don't like BG-80. <laughs> Many top players do. Uh, it's a veteran string, you know, it's a very set, steady, consistent, solid string. Um, it's a good string, you know, that's why so many people like it. Uh, it grips the shuttle well. Uh, personally, I prefer um, the Aerobyte, Yonex Aerobyte, um, or the 66 Ultimax. Um, my previous favorite string was the Victor VS850. Um, I don't think they make them anymore, um, but, you know, so try it. The best thing is you can try it. You try it and then you realize what you like or don't like um, whilst we're waiting for the prize giving ceremony. So I think photographers and journalists are all lined up. So um, 
for those who've actually consistently, well, for the whole stream joined me along um, for this journey. Thank you ever so much. Um, it's been great. Obviously, we're not finishing yet. Um, you know, we've still got the prize giving ceremony to come. Um, it will be an emotional affair for Victor, uh, even Chen Long. You know, I think I'd like to hear what the players will be able to say to each other um, on the stage or behind the stage or something like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we have that feed. Um, because I think it gives you really good insight into, you know, the, the mindset and the uh, the thinking behind it. You know, like some people would be disappointed with a, with a silver. Some people would be content with a silver. Um, you know, yeah, I like to see that. So are high-end strings worth it if you use low attention? Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's, it's a very personal thing, uh, rackets and strings. So I actually find strings are more important than rackets because... Um, strings are the ones that come into contact with the show so you can have a not not as expensive racket but if you have good strings at your good tension that you normally like you play a lot better than a high-end racket with crappy strings so yeah so um, higher end strings I'm not sure necessarily what you mean by higher end if you mean expensive strings <laughs> which generally are the thinner ones um, but yeah Thinner strings do feel better because they they feel more repulsive, so they have better pinging. Uh, they, the the shell screams off your racket a lot faster. They probably sound nicer too. However, they are thinner, so perhaps less durability. Um, so they might not last as long. But if they feel nice, then and if you enjoy them, absolutely you should go for it. But you should try around. You know, you you, sh you should try quite a few string types and then eventually you'll settle on something that you like or you'll stumble across something that you really like. Um and so absolutely you should try it. Hello Galtam. Um I might have missed you early on. Um yes, Axelton one, let's go. Um I think you were also on my very first stream um quite a while ago i think i was i was doing um stringing a few rackets on there uh, thank you for always coming onto the channel thank you for all your support you know everyone who's on here i really appreciate them um consistently hopefully you know we can continue to keep going let me close a few things on the screen hello ding liana um, good to have you on the channel. Um, what about Astrox 100 Game? Yes, 100 Game is it's it's a nice racket to play with. Um, it's out of the three 100 Pro, well ZZ Tour and Game model, the 100 Game is the easiest one to play with because a it's not as head heavy, and b it's not as stiff as the other two. So it's the easiest one to play with. Um, the finishing side of things, you know, on the outside, how the racket is painted and stuff. It looks really, really good. It looks incredible, um, you know, and it's good value because generally I think the tour is about maybe 30% at least off the ZZ and then the game is another 30% off the tour. So it's a significant, uh, significantly good value racket to play with. Give that a go, give it a test and then see how it goes. Um, string tension wise, I see most people are obsessed with, obsessed with higher tension and sound from beginners to intermediate players. So what would be best for us intermediate players? It's, it's really a personal thing. So I think the, the reason of not wanting to go, or I think the reason of not wanting to promote uh, going with a higher tension immediately, it's because of the vibrations that's coming off the racket. So for example, if you don't have a good technique and if you, have, if you don't have a good timing, on your gripping or your technique, you will feel your the vibrations coming down onto your wrist and onto your elbow. And that's why there's this term tennis elbow, which is ache and pain in your elbow um, or your joints after a session of badminton. And that's because of the, of the vibration um, that's coming off mistiming or framing the shuttle. Um, you know, but if you've got good technique, good timing, um, training, then absolutely you should play with whatever tension that you're that you're comfortable with. Um, I personally I prefer medium high tension, so I'm not I'm nowhere near the tensions that, for example, say Chen Long or Victor Axelson or Kenton Momota is playing. They're playing early mid thirties, you know. Um, so I personally I prefer twenty seven, twenty eight because I like crisper string. So slightly tighter strings are also quite crisp. So I like I like having to be able to feel crisp strings. Um, 
but sometimes you can achieve that with thinner strings as well. So if your usual string is a 0.7 mil, you know, at say 24, and if you want to feel it tighter, just go down to a thinner string at also 24 pounds, and you will feel it's slightly crisper. But yeah, you ha you have to play around with it. Um, if you know, if you're an intermediate player, so I I would always recommend a lot of players just to start with. 23, 24 pounds, mix the strings around to test a few different types of strings. Depending if you're playing with a plastic shuttle or a feather shuttle, they feel very differently as well. So if you're on plastics, you should drop down a few pounds. If you're on feathers, yeah, you can go up a few pounds. But it, this is a very general recommendation. It Everyone's different. So it's important you test out a few different settings and then you'll find one that you like. And you can continue working with your stringer to get them to your ideal uh, feel. So although personally for me I like stiffer, crisper, uh, crisper string bed, but when I went on all the way to early mid 30 pounds of tension, I found that you know I can't I can't play with them. Yes, I can play with them only if they're amazingly timed. But if I'm out of position, if I'm sent the wrong way, if I'm digging out, counter attacking, it you know the shots don't come off. So I don't enjoy playing with that. And so I, you know slowly I come back down to the attention that I like. So yeah, so absolutely, you should try that. Um, so are there any clubs focus on singles, as most clubs I find in the UK only do doubles? So so generally, I, I think that's quite a club thing. I guess perhaps a club that has a lot of courts empty, you know, people will be able to jump on and then play uh, singles. Um, for example, that's what happen, happens in our clubs. Um, so on a much quieter club night or when it's later down in the night, um, you know, some of us will be able to jump on and play singles. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, if, if there are more people that's waiting, I guess that's, you know, it, it only makes sense where more, more people gets on court. Or you can always book a, a court where you and your mates or a few other people can go down and play only singles, you know. Um, but yeah, in, in, in my club... We play singles when it's a quiet club night, or we take a few hours out and we go to we hire the courts uh, on our own and we play them there. So yes, you're uh, currently on twenty six pounds, which which I feel a bit of a dull sensation with less punch. So twenty six with point seven string. So why don't you try twenty six pounds with a different string, like a thinner string? So you know, go down to something that's point six six, give it a go. However, you do have to be aware of the uh, durability side of things. If you miss hit, it could break. So it's, it's something that you need to really uh, be aware of. Yes, meetups do work as well. Um, so you can always look around for more clubs, more uh, players to play with. So we're still waiting for the prize giving ceremony. We'll give that five more minutes. Let me check up on other messages as well at the same time. Yep. So yeah, if you have any questions, you know, always just just drop them down in the comments section below. And if I'm on live, just put them down in in a chat box. It's really really cool to have you guys. Um, you know, along with me uh, through this whole stream. Um, I look forward to doing more. Um, so yeah, always happy to help. And if you have any questions, just give me a shout. Always happy to answer questions as well. So I think the ceremony is going to come up in a bit. I think the dignitaries are out. So we should have the ceremony very, very soon. So what's the best match that you guys have watched so far um, over the Olympic, um, this current Olympics in terms of badminton? What's the best one that you've watched so far? And 
I think so. All our five winners, so Victor Axelson having the men's singles. Uh, in the men's doubles, we know it's Li Yang, Wang Qilin. Uh, women's singles, it's Chen Yufei. And women's doubles is Grace Poli, Apriani Rahayu, well deserved. And in mixed doubles is Wang Yilu and Huang Dongping. So amazing. So, yeah, we're the currently announcing. Uh, the announcers are being announced for the winners for the victory ceremony. There we go, players are out. Chen Long out with Victor Axelson. Yes, so I think you're correct. Chen Long has now a full set of medals, isn't he? Did he get did he get the bronze in the um London Olympics and then he had the gold in Rio and he has the silver medal now from the Tokyo twenty twenty Olympics. So he has a full set of medals. Gold, silver and bronze. So the dignitaries are being announced. Oh, Paul Eric Hoyer Larson. BWF president. I think he's the first man to one. So now Denmark has two. Two men's singles Olympic winners, besides the current BWF president, we now have Victor Axelson. Bronze in 2012, gold in 2016, now silver. Yes, absolutely. He's got a full set. So announcing Anthony Ginting, Anthony Sinisuka Ginting of Indonesia, bronze medal. So he's gone with a tray and putting the medal on himself, uh, COVID protocols, unfortunately. Um, I'd rather have COVID protocols and an Olympic Games than no games. So no problem. Well done. Well done, Anthony Ginting. I hope to see him in a lot more future big events. Um, he's only very young, you know, um, very, very good attacking style. Really, really classy play. Um, so... I look forward to seeing more of him in the future. So Chen Long looks content. So Chen Long's been announced. So he's he's on to stage now. Chen Long picking up his silver medal. He's very nice, smiley to the Japanese dignitary. Saying thank you to Paul Eric as well. And smiling. That's really good to see. Really, really good to see. Um, I hope to meet him again someday. I've met him, bumped into him a few times um, when he's playing the All England. I hope to see him again. And now announcing the gold medals. Gold medalist. Kin medalist. Victor Axelson. Well done, Victor. Oh, we're having a fist bump with Paul Eric Hoyer. That's good to see. Really good to see. Showing off his gold medal, as you should. As you absolutely should. I think we're having a national anthem of Denmark. Mm. 
it's actually quite nice that the volunteers behind um, seeing in the stands are also standing up for the national anthem. Danish, Chinese and Indonesian flags on the podium. So I think that's it guys. Um thank you so much for being with me here today. I think it's been a, it's been about 2 hours. Um and we've watched two amazing matches, both the bronze medal match again from Anthony Ginting against Kevin uh, Corden from Guatemala, Anthony Ginting from Indonesia and also then the gold medal match uh, Chen Long of China against Victor Axelsen of Denmark. Um, I look forward to seeing more matches in the future and hopefully be able to stream live again um, and for a watch along and thank you again and I will see you all in my next videos. Thank you again so much. See you then.